Uh, today, our College of Science and Engineering seminar uh, is one of our own. So, Rosmi Margulisio is a graduate from our program in 2012 in IESM. Um, it was an interesting timing, Ben. It was right around the same time that uh, the Spanish, uh, Spanish company had won the tender on a lot of the pavement design and construction of the North-South Highway. It's a project that is in the news a lot and uh, has been underway the last few years. I happened to meet with a couple of the folks who work for the, uh, the company, one of whom was a professor in a university in Spain. And when they found out that I work at AUA and we have an engineering program, they were curious if we had any now, pavement experts. I said, well, maybe not exactly pavement, but uh, in industrial engineering, our students look at such topics as optimization and modeling and, and uh, linear programming and, and statistical analyses and different kinds of related fields that are pretty universal in terms of engineering uh, analysis. Well, one thing led to another, and upon uh, Ross, maybe, maybe he can talk about that. Upon his graduation from AUA, he uh, was asked by the folks in the, in, the, in, the, in the company to apply for the PhD program. Well, one thing went to another, and, and he spent the last four or five years in Barcelona at the Catalonia Polytechnic University of Catalonia uh, studying concrete pavement design optimization. So very interesting topic, a very uh, relevant topic for us here in Armenia, and one that demonstrates, I think, some of the syner <coughs> synergies between uh, some of the topics we study here in the classroom and some of our reality outside. So we're on vacation now in Armenia, and we don't let Rosmi enjoy his vacation without uh, putting him on stage to uh, share with us some of his uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's fun. So thanks for taking time, and thanks for joining us again. Thank you. 
resistance to high temperature conditions, to very cold villages, and also due to great high friction, there is a high, higher fuel consumption. And also, it is the cost of the asphalt is unstable due to the fast changing international oil prices. And here you can see some different ways of modern um, construction of uh, rigid payments. Uh, in uh, our case, we will discuss the most common joint plane concrete payment. The first one you can see here with the joints from over three to six meters long. And what are the motivations that we started this project? When the concrete is integrating, um, it is in, uh, subjected typically to moisture and temperature induced stresses that drive cracking in early age. So, and and this and there will cracking resulting from these mechanics will play a vital role in short term and long term performance of this payment. And these are uh, to understand better what the cracking what does it mean. Probably most of you have been in the laboratory here in at AVA at the MB007, if I'm not mistaken the number of the room. So there you can see some some payment, this is called indoor, con indoor concrete payment. And you can see some cut joints and you could see some cracks appear. Maybe in this case it will not affect a lot the life of this payment, but in reality it's supposed to lots in vehicle loads or if it is the concrete where people are crossing in the street concrete bricks, it might affect the life of the concrete. And this crack may be a result of the uh, late cutting and this crack may be the result of the longer joint spacing that it was, it was supposed to be done so it was not done properly or maybe they used wrong strength class of concrete for this kind of payment <coughs> and also these factors are <coughs> bring the prediction of behavior of concrete structures earlier, and in particular the massive ones are of high importance. The massive ones may be dams, may be arcs, may be concrete pavement. And uh, another point of that we started is uh, to develop this model that the among other developed countries, European countries, the concrete pavements are less common in Spain if you compare with Germany or Netherlands or Belgium. Uh, and there are not uh, a lot of tools are available for concrete payment design or they have a lot of limitations and most of them are uh, there are many cases which are just for in part particular problems and they are not for general solutions and the last point and maybe the most important is the largest concrete payment is under construction in Armenia uh, by, uh, and it was started by a Spanish development company. And this is something you can see. I think everyone knows about this uh, construction project. And this, uh, in construction, when you do the cost analysis, uh, you can see if you can control the cost or you, do, you make a proper design in the, before, before starting the construction, you will avoid high costs, but if you fail to do the proper design, you will have a lot of additional costs to change the design for to reconstruct. And uh, our model, for example, I brought a very just one example of how our model can be beneficial in terms of money. If we achieve a design of thickness of pavement that is like three centimeters less than it was supposed by model codes or other experience, you will earn and 70, well, from 60 to 80 dollars is the approximately cost of one cubic meter of concrete in construction site of in Armenia. So, <coughs> if we reduce the three centimeters of the thickness, we might achieve for 100 kilometers, we might save 2.5 million dollars just for concrete. So, this is the variable cost, uh, keeping other costs uh, non variable. But also, there is another factor that we are designing the joint and joint spacing. If you do it wrong, it 
the concrete may fail and an algebra cracking may bring the failure of the structure and then we have to reconstruct all the failure. So these costs are not calculated here and are not shown because it's much more complicated to take into account. Or we could uh, take these numbers from some company but I don't know. So what is the obje what are the objectives and goals for my thesis? So you can see that it, when the concrete uh, when the cement is mixed with the water, there are chemical reactions going on and uh, the heat is generated. And there are many factors and parameters which are interrelated. And you can see, some of you if know the thermo basics of thermodynamics, you should be familiar even from physics, the, what is the conductivity, what is the heat capacity or diffusivity. And the main parameter, what we call the hertz of this scale, is the degree of hydration, which is going through time and it's starting when, when the cement <coughs> and the water are getting mixed. Hydration? Degree of hydration. Degree of hydration. Mm -hmm. Hydration, sorry. And <coughs> you can see that <coughs> there are many parameters, input parameters, and the, these parameters, <coughs> all, the param are, all the parameters mentioned here may change during the time, during the hydration, hydration. And they may be affected by temperature, and also they might affect the temperature, or the humidity, or the other mechanical or thermal parameters of the material, such as the modulus or well density, strength, etc. So the goal of our work will be to integrate uh, all the phenomena that affect the behavior of <coughs> concrete pavement in a single numerical tool for the optimized design of these elements. As, the, as these models are not usually linear, it is impossible to just add up them and to get some solution. Therefore, they should be somehow coupled. So this will need some high level of math knowledge for engineers if they do programming or construct mathematical models and do calculations. And if they use the mechanical tools, in particular fine elements or fine differs method, they should now have a high knowledge of programming to and of this kind of problem. And in existing models are just for